All right, what do you want me to say? It's time for the daily bread? Yeah, it's time for the daily bread. It's time for the daily bread. <laughs> Good job. Yeah. You're pressing hey. your vibe. Yo, what up, guys? It's Gary Vee, and it's time for the daily bread. Give us our daily bread. I want the whole basket. Cause I'm a hustle till I get it or I'm in a casket. Passionate for providing value in every way. Not cashing in for providing value every day. Paying it forward. Right thing, I'll do it till I'm dead. I hope you're hungry cause it's time for the daily bread. This is the Breadwinner Podcast, hosted by entrepreneur, influencer, and sales wolf, Tyler Harris, bringing you the insights from the most successful forward-thinking entrepreneurs and influencers, so that you can rise to the top and make more dough. Now, let's get into the show. Let everybody else know in a couple minutes here, just who is who is Digital Jeff? Who is Digital <laughs> Jeff, man? You know, a uh, funny thing is that I keep asking myself that question because <laughs> I feel like uh, it changes day to day. You know, it's uh, it's always, uh, it's one of the, I think the missions that, that, I, that I have personally where I'm always trying to find find myself, you know, I'm trying to find who I am, what I stand for, and, it, and I keep tweaking that daily, you know. So, um, aside from that, in the, in the, in the perspective of, of uh, this world, I guess, um, I'm a father of four. Yeah, uh, I've been married for 16 years now. It's awesome. Uh, I got married when I was 17 years old. So do the math. Getting a little bit older now. Those odds have got to be like <laughs> slim to none to start slim there and none, be 16 yeah. years old. Shout out to awesome. my wife Susie. I love you. <laughs> um, and uh, I'm excited actually today because I'm actually flying out right now after the podcast. I'm flying out to go see see the family. That's so. awesome. Very cool. Well, cool, man. Let's just jump right into this first question. So I found that with most artists, they have to kind of get into like the zone, right? So what's one thing that you do to kind of help you get into that zone when you're going to go produce uh, and make some content, create some type of art? Like, what do you do to get in that zone? So, man, that leads right into the perfect leeway into the second question because you talked about working with people that you like working with, right? Mm -hmm. So the struggle that I've seen many entrepreneurs face, especially creatives, is kind of that pull between taking jobs purely based on needing to generate revenue versus taking jobs because it's what you're passionate about and what you enjoy doing. So, um, you know, Gary Vee always talks about, you know, you can make six figures doing something you hate or you can make, you know, 60, 70 grand doing something you absolutely love and which are you going to be happier? obviously doing what you love. So what was that, what did that look like for you? Like when that switch occurred and what kind of advice would you give to people that are kind of in that starting phase where they're just taking every job they can get to make money, but want to start being more selective and doing things that they're actually like born to do? Yeah. So, um, so when I started, I mean, I was 17 years old, I was married. And, um, the day that I got, the day that I found out my, my girlfriend at the time, which is my wife now, I was, um, the day I found out she was expecting, was the day that I was applying for film school, the wow. same exact day. Wow! And um, she told me, uh, "I think I'm pregnant. Uh, let's go get a pregnancy test, <laughs> right?" And what ended up happening is that in, at the end of the day, we found out she was uh, she was pregnant, right? And I immediately knew that I couldn't take the like the traditional route to go to film school, to go to the art schools. Yep. And uh, that same day, I got a job. Actually, the following day, I got a job. I got a job at Pizza Hut, and I found out right away that I needed to figure out a way to make money while still doing and practicing my art form to Got get it. better at filmmaking and all that. So about a year later, I opened up my first photo studio and that was a way for me to generate revenue and at the same time learn what I was doing. So I was I was actually hmm. charging, uh, I was doing weddings and events and stuff like that. I was charging you know, a little bit of money to, to make ends meet, to provide for the family. And at the same time, I was learning the skills. So I personally do not advise that. If you're 18 years old right now, I do not advise doing it for the money yep. day one because what you want to do is you want to think of an idea write it down on paper like let's say I want to go create this like you say you're a photographer right I want to create this image and you write down you write down that idea and then you go in that same day you find a way to execute that idea mm. and slowly that's going to build your portfolio and when you when you when you figure out what, uh, when you figure out like th those are the things that you want to do eventually the leads will come to you yep. people uh, will start reaching out to you like hey 
um, I love your style. You know, I love your style, and I want to I want to hire you for this project. Versus if you start off like the way I started doing events and weddings and stuff like that, you never get to find your you never actually build your portfolio. So the first thing I tell uh, when I'm I've been a mentor to um, thousands of students, mm -hmm. I used to teach for six years. So what I would tell my my apprentices was like, listen, don't focus on making like doing a fifty dollar photo shoot. It's not gonna get you anywhere. <laughs> yeah. Like write down an idea that you that you have in your mind right now and go make that image happen. Go make that video happen. And build that portfolio as fast as you can for I mean, like two years of just doing that day to day. And once you get that, you're gonna be 10 times ahead of anybody trying to make money. And uh, you're gonna be able to 10x, you know, uh, your value. So. There's, there's an entrepreneur, I'm sure you're familiar with, he talked about how uh, the money will follow, right? Oh, so, yeah, so I think he's that, sitting right next to me. Okay, got it, got it, got it, got it. <laughs> yeah, uh, so, the quote so, is, the quote is, let me just say the quote. Yeah, uh, do it. Uh, money leads, never follows. Yep. Right. No, wait, wait. No, no, no. Say that, wait, I said it totally wrong. <laughs> yeah, that's that's perfect. Yes, cut and cut and cut. <laughs> Money never leads; it always follows. Money never leads; it always follows. Perfect. So, kind of getting into more in, in, with you and Gerard. So, with leaders create leaders. You guys have interviewed some of the most incredible people in the on this planet, as far as entrepreneurs, influencers, thought leaders. What's kind of one common thread or common theme that you've taken from all those different interviews that you've been able to kind of implement in your own life or just be able to really, um, that's really made an impact on you? Mm -hmm. um, one thing I've noticed from everybody is that they're, that the moment they think of these ideas, they're trying to execute them also. Mm. So... So to be honest, like mm -hmm. I would say to you, I'm not going to give you any one name, yeah. but to, to who I want to see on your show, I want to see all the people that, that, that have the untold stories, you know, that are, that are going through that pain and that don't necessarily have the big spotlight yet, but have an unbelievable story of mm -hmm. how they're, they, they've taken their obstacles and turned them into opportunity. Absolutely. So whoever that is, let's go and find those people. Yeah, and that's 100%. That's the reason why we did this. Like, I wanted to bring on real people that have real stories that are willing to actually tell them. Yeah. Uh, and that's the most important to me. I, so. And also, I would suggest Logan Cohen. Yeah. She's a female entrepreneur. I think we need to really highlight more of the she's women incredible. entrepreneurs. She's incredible. I was at you know, Take Ownership where she came, like, on the spot. Didn't she? Yep. She's the one that came in, like, on the spot. Yeah. Just, like, randomly oh, on a whim came in. Unbelievable. I've been I'm, following her. Yes. Get she's her awesome. On. We're actually co-hosting. Uh, a, a, a short, a short little podcast series that we decided to do is like kind of just like a as a tested co-host called Purpose Meets Profit. Mm -hmm. So if you guys want to check her out, uh, you can check her out there. But Tyler, you should bring her on the yeah, show. Yeah, we'll definitely do that. Well, man, well that's it, guys. That is the uh, that is the episode of the Breadwinner Podcast. If you want to check out more uh, in depth on this interview, check out the Daily Bread Vlog on YouTube. Man, Gerard, I really appreciate you uh, taking the time, not only being be in the podcast, but to meet in person and get Thanks, this thing man. done, appreciate man. I appreciate it. you. Hey, listen, I got to say, you are an executor, bro. <laughs> like, you have gone all in, and yeah, it's man. really impressive and inspiring to see, like, you and your team, like, working hard, making this all happen. And uh, any anything I can do to support you, appreciate that. Uh, let me know. And, and anyone in your community, feel free to reach out. I'd be more than happy to support all of you. But thanks awesome, for having man. me on. Hey, before I uh, hit this uh, outro here, where can people find you online if they aren't already following you? Yeah, for you know, really just uh, uh, right now, my biggest thing is I'm looking for people that really want to uh, get my mentorship. I'm mm -hmm. looking for a, a small group of, men of mentees that I can mm -hmm. really, really help, not yep. on a mass scale, but very intimate. So just if you head so to So maybe Gerard, like some of those people that were asking, like, how do I find a mentor? Yeah, exactly. That would be one way. Yep. And just go to <laughs> GerardAdams.com and Perfect. then uh, sign up, or you can email me, GA at GerardAdams.com. Perfect, man. With that, this is Tyler Harris, and this is the Bread Winner Podcast. Sweet. Thank you for listening to the Bread Winner Podcast. I can remember sitting in church being like, okay, well, why, why are they putting all this time, money, and effort to reach people in some little tribe in some part of the world when there's people like within a square mile of here that need help? Yeah. So I figured that's, I, I kind of assumed like that's your thought with the founders and like why you brought it to Newark and, and wanted to affect this, um, this community here. And I think you said, was it on your TEDx talk that not everybody can be an entrepreneur, but everybody entrepreneurs can be, can be found anywhere. 
Exactly. So like talk about that a little bit, like bringing founders like to Newark and like what that meant for you to bring it back home because you could have gone anywhere and done anything yeah. really. Yeah. So why did you do that? You know, for me, I mean, I went through some like deep soul searching. I mean, you know, I, I, first of all, am I speaking into mm -hmm. this, Frank? Um, so you don't even have to speak into it. You can just okay, speak. Cool. It'll pick it up. So, so yeah, yeah. to be honest with you, like I didn't expect to have an exit, you know? I, yeah. Because you, know, you were how old at that time? Uh, I, I was only like, well, we started at like 27 years. I was like 27 years old yeah. when I started it, you know? And uh, when the exit came, I was like 29 years old, something like that. It's incredible. Uh, we ended up exiting on January when I turned 30. But um, for me, it wasn't like, it wasn't as far as I, how I felt as in where I was in my life. It just was like, I felt that we still had so much room to grow. Yeah. And here's this big billion dollar giant that comes and like, you know, offers you this just this thing. And, you know, I got threatening letters from my investors. So, it, you know, the board meeting to make that decision was extremely stressful. And yeah. I had every one of my investors, you know, uh, pushing the exit down my throat. And yeah. I had two of my co-founders with me, there's three of us, that I mentored that were 18, 19 years old when I mentored them. <laughs> So yeah. you imagine this check that they're looking at, at 24 <laughs> yeah. years old, yeah, yeah. and they're like, you know, Facebook's changing algorithms, it's just like, this is a win for us. So yeah. I did it. So afterwards, that's when I started looking at social media. Yep. And to be really to be really honest, I was like, man, I wonder who's out there like that I would be late to, because yeah. I haven't ever looked at social media, and I had this exit, I'm like curious, I'm yeah. looking around, and I see this Ty, I see Ty Lopez. Yeah. And, you know, I'm looking at him, and, uh, you know, God bless him, you know, he's killing it. Sure. He's such a massive following. Yeah. But I was like, wow, like, I feel like him and I saw some other people that I felt at that time, I'm not saying I feel this way now, mm -hmm. but at that time I felt weren't, there wasn't a lot of integrity yeah. for, uh, for like relating to real entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, for me at the time, like, I was like, whoa, like, I, I see a lot of also like 19, 20 year olds that are giving like, life coaching yeah, yeah and yeah. selling the dream of entrepreneurship and selling the multi-million dollar mm. like fake it till you make it almost yeah feel. and i'm like yo this is a this is the problem bad. this is yeah. a problem then someone was like you gotta check out gary vanderchuk so <laughs> i was like okay cool there's like an older cat that's yeah like, yeah get like okay cool. <laughs> but i was like yo who's like the millennial guy that's like that, that's got it and i was nah. like yo i've actually like, i got the credibility now i've yep. got the eggs i've been i got the scars to fucking prove it that yep. i didn't do the fucking war zone yeah so i was like you know i really i think it's time for me to really step up because that was the first time in my life that i went from and i still seek mentorship but that exit i was the mentor i mentored the two co-founders yep you know so so in that moment i was like All right, i want to step into being that leader then what happened was i was getting ready to get my wire and an accountant said to me gee you should really move to florida because coming in next year you're going to be getting these big yeah. wires and like you know mm -hmm. save on state income tax yeah sure so i'm like yeah that sounds amazing right? <laughs> yeah yeah so i go to florida and i get this beautiful penthouse me and my girlfriend go out on the balcony we look out on this balcony man ocean views and i'm like wow <laughs> like you know what I mean? Yeah, and sure. Here I am at like whatever, thirty years old, and I and it hit me like like a lightning bolt, bro. Like I remember just being on that balcony and praying and just thanking God for this opportunity, like hmm. this opportunity. And then out of nowhere, I just felt this like feeling, and I saw that like and I just looked out at this ocean. And it was like this, just this voice, this message that was just like, this is not, th this isn't it though. <laughs> don't think, don't be thankful now because this yeah. isn't it. Yeah. So I, it like hit me that like, okay, this is a blessing, this is a gift, but mm -hmm. I'm not supposed to be in Florida right now and sure. it's a balcony with ocean views. Yep. I got more work to do. <laughs> why did this happen? So I started really questioning why this happened to me. Yep. And then I started really thinking back and I, you know, everything started making sense, right? That, that, the landscape of entrepreneurship, looking at the people that were inspiring others, you know, why did this exit happen to me? You know, um, my faith, you know, being thankful, and it just all came together as like, you know what? You're supposed to bring this back home. There's a lot of people that need help right mm -hmm. now. You're not supposed to be in Florida. Yeah. You have a bigger purpose in this life. Yeah. And that's when I started thinking about, you know, my legacy and like 
why I'm really here. And I don't think I ever really slowed down to think about that during the years prior, because I was so like, you know, you're an entrepreneur just trying to go out there and just yeah. like create and get it, you know, trying to make it. So um, I got asked to, uh, you know, after an exit, you get asked to speak yep. different places. So I got, I, I got asked to speak in Silicon Valley and I get there and I'm like, <laughs> now I know what it's like to have an entrepreneurship ecosystem. Like, yeah. I didn't grow up with no. There was even when we were, we were filming this, like there was nothing like sure. this ever. You didn't have a cafe. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You didn't have incubators. You didn't have anywhere to go to freaking work. You got your parents' garage mm -hmm. or basement. Yeah, the you know? library. You know yeah. What I'm <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so I was like, <laughs> so when I got in, I got inspired by Silicon Valley, and um, and I was like, I should bring this back home, and where my parents, you know. Uh, my grandparents, when they immigrated here, and my mother, when she came here, and my father, they grew up in York. And my church is in York. That's okay. how I got my name, Gerard. Got it. So it was a saint of mothers and sick children. So for me, I, York is in my DNA. I grew mm -hmm. up there. It's my church. It's everything. But the thing is that York was this unbelievable wealthy city, and then it got stripped during the Industrial Revolution. We yeah. lost all those factory jobs, all these things. Mm -hmm. And now 33% of the population is under poverty. Wow. So I'm looking at the landscape of like what you just said, right? Yeah. Like here are all these people that are sending drones to provide Wi-Fi in Africa and <laughs> sending rockets that create freaking, mm -hmm. you know, the ability to go to Mars <laughs> and you got people creating, you know, um, amazing things yeah. in third world countries, which is important. Absolutely. It has a ripple effect on the whole global, mm -hmm. like, you know, human, uh, you know, um, Absolutely. Just, just human society. Mm -hmm. but. But I do feel like as a like right under our nose, yeah. there are these kids that in Newark right here mm -hmm. don't even have they don't have Wi Fi. Yeah. They don't have a phone. They don't have a computer. They don't have educ the right education. They don't have they don't even know how they're gonna eat it. Their parents are in jail, on crack, it, you know what I'm saying? They don't yeah. have any of that. So I felt like it was my calling, um, my purpose to like come back to the city and see if I can build a a social enterprise which on um, one end can support entrepreneurs that are adults that are actually trying to build their mm -hmm. businesses and I can work with them I can have them get the get the mentorship they need the education they need the, the network they need and then on the other end build programs that provide uh, programs on emotional intelligence financial yep. literacy and entrepreneurship which is what I wish I learned at a young age mm -hmm. to middle school which they don't teach you kids, and then connect these kids with actual mentors yeah. because once you have that mentor in it right you step, it look what happened to you. Right? Yeah, you absolutely. 150, 350, 450, yep. 700, and yep. you keep going, right? Yeah. Have one person. Yep. And that's the problem is a lot of these young kids, they don't have that. Mm -hmm. They've been lied to their entire lives. Their parents are on drugs. Yep. Their parents are in jail. They Their friends are getting shot and killed. Mm -hmm. And all they know is they got to sell drugs in order to eat. Yep. You don't have a person going to them and saying, hey, look, I, I, I was there. I sold drugs too. Absolutely. That's not the answer. You can mm -hmm. take those same skills and learn some, some of these skills and channel that into business. And if you change your mindset, you will change the trajectory of your life. And I think that's, the, that's how we can actually see a shift in culture and, you know, in, in poverty. Yeah. So um, for me, I was trying to, 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 to build and showcase an example here in York so that we can scale it nationwide. Yeah. Absolutely, man. There's so much stuff I would love to impact there. But man, when you're talking about being on that balcony in Florida, so I don't think I've even talked about this on the vlog yet. Um, he already knows what I'm talking about because I've talked to him about it. <laughs> um, so when I, when I started documenting my life on social media, like I made a, um, basically made a commitment from day one that I wasn't going to monetize it for five years. Like I'm not selling anything. Um, and that's a big commitment because of the fact that it takes a ton of time, ton of energy, and I'm spending, I mean, it's, I'm spending a lot funny. of money. Like I've run ads, constant, like building just like anybody else that's building a business, except there's no revenue on the other end of it. Yeah. Um, but, uh, I know but for me, for, but for me, I wanted to make that, that mental switch that I just didn't even think about it. And I knew that unless I made that, that hard commitment in five years was just this arbitrary number. It was literally one o'clock in the morning on a Facebook live and I just threw out five years and just kind of the next morning I was like, did I say five years? I'm like, oh man, it's a long time. <laughs> uh, seven or eight months ago, uh, I was I had some meetings on, uh, on a Friday. My wife went up to uh, Asheville, North Carolina where, where her family is and I was going to go after I got out of these meetings. And I'm traveling up from South Carolina to North Carolina and I get um, texting with my wife and right before I text her, um, right before I'm going up the mountains where I always lose service, I'm texting her. And uh, she's like, 
uh, man, she had a crazy day with our daughter. I got an 18-month-old. She's like, it's been a crazy day. My day had been like insane. And I was like, hey, you want me to pick up some beer on the way? So we're going to be grilling out and this, this thing. And um, I was like, uh, beer and tequila. And then like I lost service. So I'm going through the mountains and, and I was like, it's at this place where like I'm doing all this stuff. I'm working like 18, 20 hours a day. Just wow. like I've got two podcasts, a daily vlog. Yeah. We've got the average life insurance agent sells 150 policies a year. I sold 2,200 last year. And like just that alone, me with that many people face to face, 238 nights in a hotel last year, like just craziness. And I got to this point where I was just like, what am I doing? Like, am I really doing what I'm supposed to be doing? And so I started praying in my car, like, you know, one of those like real prayers, like crying, praying, like, just like, what am I supposed to be doing? And there was this moment I had my, I had my phone sitting like, yeah, I had this phone sitting in my lap. And I'm just like, God, like, I just need you to tell me right now, like right now, like, what am I supposed to be doing right, right this second? And right when I said that, like the second I said it, I came on the other side of the mountain, my service came back, my phone vibrated. Like the second that I said that, and I remember I had said, um, you know, do you want me to bring some beer and tequila? And my wife, in the way she responded, the context was like, like, yeah, tell me about it. But she said, preach. And so I'm sitting there, you know, having this prayer and like, tell me what I'm supposed to be doing. My phone vibrates and it says, preach. <laughs> and, and I'm like, and I'm looking down at my phone. I'm like, come again? <laughs> like. And it just like messed me up. I'm like, well, number one, like, like, yeah, like yeah, that yeah. type of clear message, like that doesn't happen often. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, so what does this mean? What does this mean? And I'm like, at, at the time, my wife and I were actually starting an extension site of this church that we belong to. It's called Elevation Church in Charlotte. And we were starting an extension site in Greenville. And I'm like, does this mean like be a preacher? <laughs> it says preach. Um, and I had that very quick conversation with my wife that went about five minutes and she was like, no. Um, and, <laughs> but throughout this process over that, that next few months and doing what I'm doing on social media and being able to have these conversations with people and being able to like meet people in person and like actually provide like an insane amount of value and like connect and, and doing it without any expectation of anything yeah, in return, power, not transactional. Like I finally had, like, had this clarity, like, like, it didn't say be a preacher, it just said preach. Right. And it didn't say what you had to preach about. Right. It just said preach. And like for me, it was like social media was that platform for me to get my message out, which was a message of, you know, when, if you're in a struggle like I was in three and a half years ago, that the problem is you usually don't learn in hindsight that that process of that struggle is what's creating the person that can receive the blessing on the other side of it. Yeah. And that until you get through what you're going through, like you'll never receive the blessing on the other side and like when do people hear that like they're like okay well screw you like i'm in it you know like yeah. doesn't take the gun out of my mouth you know at, the, at that moment yeah. but like that's my whole focus now is like how can i reach that person that's in the middle of that struggle that i was in three and a half years yeah. ago where i felt like i had nowhere to go and that's be that little bit of a spark yeah, yeah. because they just need that yeah. one little yeah. to know that like everything can change over a year yeah. Two years, three years, you like your entire you life. Know, you may not even know like when it happens. I mean, I, I have moments like that too. Um, you know, doing the leaders create leaders. Oh yeah. Like it's it's expensive. It's time. Yeah, absolutely. Our energy. For me, a big thing that touches me is like when I get letters, man. Yeah. It's weird. Yeah. I never thought I'd get fucking letters, dude. You know? so like a lot, when I open up and someone like hand writes to me about how like an episode or a podcast they heard or something completely triggered them and yeah. shifted their mind and there's been times where they're like suicidal they're mm -hmm. like completely depressed rock bottom yeah and it's been able to give them a little a little push a little shift a little bit of a different perspective yeah and a little bit of inspiration and then and they're like and now i'm like i'm going after my dreams yeah. i'm building this company i'm building you know and it's like that's it you know, like, like that's the roi like, like that's ROI. that's it I'll try to make anything possibly I can make it happen because it's not just some fake statement to like, it's not some like fake jab so that I can come with the right hook like yeah. the next second, you know, like, like I talked to Josh Hatch the other day and, um, and I just had a question for him, but I literally felt so guilty for not like doing anything before asking him a question. Like it literally, like I even told him later, I was like, Hey man, I was like, thank you for connecting me with Nikki. I was like, and by the way, I was like, that was 
super uncomfortable for me to like call you up and ask you a question like on the spot because normally I would love to like provide you value first. Like I just don't, I don't like, like I don't like the relationship being like that, you know? And he was like, no, no, you had like a legit question and I was happy to fill it. But like for a lot of people that are, you know, trying to, um, bring in these not necessarily mentors but like build some type of relationship with these people that they're following on instagram and facebook and all this stuff i mean what what would you tell them to something that they could do to make it to where like if it is altruistic if they really do want to provide value like how how can they do that like when you get a dm you get dms all day long and it's from people that are saying like hey i'd love to talk to you i'd love to do this love to do that like which, like, what are the messages that you get that you're like, huh, that's interesting, or huh, that's different, you know what I mean? I, you just said letters, like, that made, that made yeah, some big... Yeah, I mean, obviously, like, that, that touches me. Yeah. Um, you know, a big one for me right now is, like, and then I learned this, I actually learned this from one of my mentors, but everybody has a, um, everybody has a trigger. Everyone has, like, this the one thing that's, like, the yeah. hot button, like, the thing that, like, really gets, like, in my opinion, it's typically for guys like us or women like us. It's something that doesn't have to do with business. Mm -hmm. It's something deeper. Mm -hmm. Maybe a kid has aut uh, autism. Yeah. Maybe you're you're something to do with your fighting cancer. Mm -hmm. uh, that kind of, you know, you're a big component of like fighting fuck cancer. Yeah. You know? yeah, yeah. For me, it's helping inner city kids. Mm -hmm. You know, so for me, it's like finding the thing that is like the uh, behind all of the. Glory and the success yeah. that we see underneath all of that, there's yeah. some kind of real give back. Yeah. That is, you know, they're providing all this value, but at the end of the day, there's something else that they that they really care about. I mean, for Tony Robbins, it's like it's feeding, feeding homeless yeah. people, feeding lives. Right? Yep. You know, so for me, it's just like when I have someone, because I'm the only one supporting the nonprofit side. Yeah. You know, I got a house where I let people that are homeless stay in that house. And yeah. Then, you know, we're feeding home, we're doing everything we can, we're educating these kids. Mm -hmm. So for me, what I'm tr trying to do right now, and particularly, is like. One way that I feel like, okay, how can I provide value to people to help support this mission? Yeah. Is I want to create a dinner series. Yeah. And, you know, $500 a seat. I'm going to highly curate it. Have cool influencers that remind you to come to that dinner. Everyone gets a nice meal with a, a chef, not just at a restaurant, like an actual private chef where he's going to cook for everybody. That's so create smart. create a really cool experience. Curate it with like 12 people, something like that. Mm -hmm. That money goes, direct, everyone knows all that goes that way. And that and that price is probably low. Like, do you think so? I, I mean, so I did that dinner last night. Like, and it was just like super informal. Like, right. I put one Instagram post out, just like, "Hey, I'm in New York City. If you yeah. want to meet up, like, hit me up." But I had a kid, um, not kid. I had a guy uh, uh, DM me this morning, and he's like, "Hey, man, would you ever think about doing one of those dinners in my town?" I'm like, "What?" I'm like, literally, like, like we didn't do like there was no like f there was no formal like there's nothing there was no structure to it whatsoever. Yeah. But like everybody got so much out of it just because there was like this common thread throughout. Like we were all like the, yeah, law, the law of attraction is real yeah, in that type of environment. Cool, like, but dude, for that, yeah. like that would do so in the content that you would create in that environment. If you keep it in like cause last night, our intent was to be able to create a bunch of content while we were there. But it was so loud in this restaurant. We were at yeah. the restaurant was awesome, but it was just so loud and crowded that we didn't really get to record anything. But if you had it in a private yeah. environment to where you had cameras rolling the whole time, like dude, I don't know if there is a. Pr I mean, so, I, so let's let's plan. Yeah, it, man. I, would I mean, I would. With you, I mean, I would pay. Yeah, you know absolutely. Co-hosted, and we can invite some people. Yeah, up. I'll, we could do it in uh, Charlotte. Or, yeah, or, or somewhere near you. Absolutely. I'll come out there. No, we can do I that. Charlotte or Atlanta, maybe we can get um, ETA's group involved. Yeah. Maybe. Um, yeah, I would love to do that because I mean that's. That's the that's the ultimate way of. I mean, it's as old as time to yeah. to build relationships, yeah. breaking bread together. Breaking like bread, that's. Yeah. I mean, that's it. I can't believe we just said breaking bread on the daily bread, and that's like the first time I've ever said a pun and not done it intentionally. Yeah, yeah. we're like we are literally just a just rolling with uh, bread puns. with bread puns these days. Bread puns. <laughs> bread, I mean, it's literally it's all we talk about. Oh, um, well, you heard it first here. You know, ready, breaking bread. It's breaking bread dinner. Dude, that's what you should call it. Breaking bread. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, that's that's perfect. No, yeah, I would love I, to. I'd love, It'd be great, if man. That's, if that's if that's something that you'd be open to, that would help us out. And just in one hundred percent fun, what you're talking about. Like I'm, yeah. I am one hundred, and I'll, yeah, and I can orchestrate it. Yeah, yeah. Dude, absolutely. 
the other thing I was going to um, mention to you, and this is off the record, um, uh, Sean Whalen came through. He happened to be in New York. Uh, he lives in Utah, and we've been connecting, and he was on the podcast before. So it was just like the coolest day, uh, one of the coolest days of my life, quite frankly. And hey, Sean. Hey, nice to meet you, you. TJ. Am I in your spot here? No, you're not. That's your spot. That's your spot. Make sure I turn this microphone on. That way we can record. In case we want it. Oh, you never know what's going to happen, dude. You always have to leave. <laughs> That's why yeah, I, yeah. my old video guy, I I fired him because it's like when we went up to Idaho yeah. to Russell Brunson's thing. Yeah. Gary was keynoting it. Yeah. And there's 400 people there. Mm -hmm. And Gary, you know, D-Rock comes in, and then Gary comes in. Yeah. And I'm like, Gary, and he's already walked, like, halfway up the thing. Yeah. And he turns around, and he runs back, and gives me a big hug. And my videographer's over on the other side of the room talking to this social celebrity girl. Super pleased. I lost my fucking mind. <laughs> I'm like, bro, like, that one piece of content... That one thing. Oh, that's, that's all you. That was the whole thing. Gold. Yeah. Gold. I mean, that one bit, and it's just like I don't know. It's People like, don't realize, like, like, the f f I mean, forget everything else. Just mm -hmm. take a phone. Yeah. Take a cell phone. What mm -hmm. People don't realize is you have your videographer. Yeah. Oh yeah. You have your editing studio. You've got your delivery method from. Um, I mean, shit, pick your platform. Yeah. Pick yeah. your platform. Mm -hmm. And you literally have the ability to create a reality TV show, yeah. a reality pod. I mean, whatever you want. Yeah. It's crazy, man. Oh, so few I, people. I mean, well, you guys get it. I mean, that's <laughs> what we're, and we're, um, I mean, we're, the majority of the stuff we do is all from iPhone. Um, we'll set up like two iPads, two iPhones, like different angles and. That's pretty much it. Do we? I have almost it's better than the camera. Honestly. From from what I can track, and you know how it is. Like some some videos that go viral will yeah. get ripped, and then they're replaced other places. Yeah. So you can't quantify any of the numbers. Yeah. But the numbers that we can quantify is just over six hundred million. That's through Fox, ABC, NBC, through like Glenn Beck reposted my my Obama rant video. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's got. <laughs> 12 million on my Facebook page, but then had like 35 million on his page. But when you stop and think about it, every single one was with this. Yeah. There wasn't a single one with a green screen. <laughs> there wasn't a single one with like clap the audio, let's freaking sing yeah. the shit. It was literally like my rant on the beach that has 100 yeah. million views. It was literally four minutes like I wasn't mm -hmm. even going to ship it. I wasn't even going to put it out there. In fact, the title of it was just Lions Not Sheep because I didn't know what to put. Yeah. And that was like the most viral video that I've had but like Jeez. you know Gary's like what I'm learning from Gary is the repurposing game that's we'll see and obviously he's got the infrastructure he's got the manpower built, but like, to do it so that's where I'm what I found was when I'm doing like the podcast with this daily vlog that like the creative side of it is I figured out was actually the only thing that I actually enjoy yeah which is sucks because I actually enjoy it. It's fun, but it sucks because, like, the whole idea of the daily vlog is to be able to have someone video mm -hmm. and then have all that content be all of your content and you're completely hands off and this down just automated. Well, now, like, I'm in it and I'm like, I'm like, I, I'm I like, can't move do this that, line dude. here, move this there, like, let's like start nah. the music here, end it there, and like, I'm That's actually hard, enjoying bro. that part. So now, like, you know, from 10 p.m. till 2 in the morning I'm sitting there right with him like on the laptop we, we posted the episode yesterday at 2.30 in the morning yeah last night or this morning 2.30 because we were still editing and getting it all done and so I have not, have not uh, scaled the right way I'm dude I'm, I'm in the same I'm, I'm doing the same thing well if you look at like like I talked to D-Rock uh, for a while mm -hmm. um, at that event you know D-Rock was cool because like I mean you sought him out like you weren't, you didn't come to him, right? Or did you? It, it, it like simultaneously. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah, the universe just, collided. Yeah. But D Rock's story was nuts. I mean, he just yeah. he had balls. Just made dude. it. He just walked in and was like, "Yo, yeah. I want to take you and like 
like yeah, put you out that one there. short film, I guess. And so. and and now he's got a whole crew. Yeah, he There's can do anything he wants. Twenty to, right? guys on mm -hmm. Gary's creative team. Mm -hmm. There's an, an Instagram team. There's a freaking yeah. content team. There's a product yeah. team that handle like the books and the shoes and the whatever, whatever. People, people don't you know. People don't even. People don't realize like what he's really, really doing. Like he's what do you think he's really doing? He's he is creating a machine to be able to do whatever in the world he ever wants. Like you want to talk about being able to make change happen, like political. Any he can literally run anything through that machine that he's building right now, and it comes out on the other side of it ten x. And like I have so much respect for him for building a client service business that sucks for ten years. Yeah. In order that long term of vision to know what he'll have on the other end of it. Uh, I mean, like, I mean, it's just the simple fact that, like, I mean, like, literally, when he came out with those shoes, I thought they were the ugliest shoes on in the world. <laughs> I would have never, ever worn them, but I feel so guilty not even not having bought them. Like, I literally feel guilty, like, every day. I'm like, I'm like man, like, at some point, like, like it just, I was like, I gotta get a pair of these freaking shoes. Just even, just, just even put them on my desk and yeah, have I mean, them. Just, just because of the amount of value yeah. that he's put out. Um, but now, but now he's finally starting to talk about it a little about buying these old kind of nostalgic brands and then rebranding them through his his um, the mothership. Well, see, that's what. And then selling them for. That's what, in my opinion, and my take's a little different. He's building VaynerMedia to where he's. He, I want to build lions, not sheep, so that somebody's rocking a lions, not sheep T-shirt mm -hmm. and has no clue who I am. Yeah. Yeah. I want people to buy my gear and not have any idea who Sean Whalen is. Yeah. But obviously somebody's got to get that snowball started from mm -hmm. the top of the hill and started rolling. Yeah. And what Gary's figured out, which is why the repurposing is massive, they mm -hmm. went from literally the daily thing, following it around all day, and then and then D-Rock would grind all night yeah. and then do it again and do it again. It's not a sustainable model. No. But they might have enough content. Yeah, you find that out fast, right? Well, it was like day two, to, you were sleeping it. in, and I was like, oh, shit, the thing's going to implode on day two, right? Like, he wants to grind, and also, like, he just... But they got that. They yeah. got that early. And what's dope is, like, the the, the way uh, Gary's morphed it into, I could take one day of content and do everything. 30 pieces of original content. I can use this bit here, this bit there. And now, like... You know, we don't have to shoot every single day. Mm -hmm. But what he's, dude, he's turning VaynerMedia into a, into a giant. And people don't even realize it because everybody who would otherwise hire VaynerMedia or hire a media company is seeing all the stuff. Yeah. So when he walks into Coke, fucking anybody, mm -hmm. Ford, yeah. CBS, ABC, NBC, you know, whatever furniture company, yeah. doesn't matter, Apple, everybody knows who he is mm -hmm. and everybody knows what he does. Yeah. Like, you don't have to sell anymore. No. You don't have to sell. Like, like they're like, okay, we want that young hip, whether it's millennial, whether it's this, whether it's that, yeah. we want that ability to take our brand, our product, our blankets, mm -hmm. our couches, our microphones, and, and put them into the marketplace so that everybody's talking about them. Yeah. Well, and the, and the whole, like, underpriced attention, like, I mean, he's, 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 like, been throwing out these, like, random brand names. He's like, I could take, uh, what was the one he said, like, Green Giant. Oh. And then I can buy the company for five million and run it through this machine and sell it for fifty million in mm -hmm. two years and that's he's like that's how we're gonna buy the jets one day is by yeah. starting to just like literally flip companies like people flip right. houses. But, but but literally every single thing is going through VaynerMedia. Yeah. I mean and VaynerMedia is going from fifty employees. I mean that's, that's so it, th that's insane. what's crazy is like yeah. when you think about it like it's genius because he's using his life, his deal, his story yeah. to sell the big picture which is now all the athletes if you notice all the rappers yeah. like you dude, rap, he, everybody's he, showing up because they're like dude i want i want the attention like you have the attention he's gonna, he, i guarantee you he's gonna announce his rec a record, record deal like, like, I, it's, one, it's, like, it's it's a no-brainer dude like last night no last night he was in the uh studio with, like in the, like sucked. not just in the studio yeah. but like in the recording booth <laughs> yeah. and like all this like yeah. i mean he's he's heavy heavy in that but the um yeah I mean, it's it's incredible. I'm well, it's 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 not like. Have, did you ever listen to the podcast um, that he did with Joe Rogan? I did, dude. That one. Did you listen to that? There were some there were some nuggets in there that were like, what the fuck? Mm -hmm. The way that the way that his mind operates. 
he was talking about like the the adaptation from like the radio to the TV, right? Yeah. That was like the first big cultural mm-hmm. media shift. But all the all the old school radio people were like, "Fuck the TV, it's gonna fail, right? <laughs> yeah. Everybody's gonna keep listening." Well, they all got burned, and then you have like the Johnny Carsons and the people that adapted that were yeah. like, "I'm gonna create this thing on this new platform," and they all they all ended up crushing it. Well, then you, then you fast forward to today, and what he was telling Joe is he's like, this is the new TV. And, I mean, you're seeing it. Like, yeah. who, who watched... When's the last time you watched a commercial on TV? I haven't watched TV. Like, ever. No. Like, I, 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 t- I rarely watch TV, period, but if I do watch anything, it's TV or it's mm. recorded or whatever, whatever. Yeah. So when you stop and think about, like, the adaptation of, now I can take this and I can project whatever I want from here onto here or onto my, my TV or whatever, whatever, like... You're not talking about that live content happening more. It's all it's all coming through here. But that's what so few people understand is like this is mm-hmm. everything. You could get rid of everything else and build a multi million dollar brand just with this. I want the whole basket. Starving. <laughs>